The numeric symbol for the value of one is a single line, sometimes with a curve at the upper end. It, along with the following numerals, have their origins in Guba, Nagari, Gupta, and Brahmi. As you can see, they originated from mere tally marks. But what about the word one? Like all of its representations in other languages? And what if they came from a single origin? Well, look no further. Today we will talk about the possible origin of R and many other words for one. It can be traced back to this Middle English term and its variants from Old English. But this is the furthest back this word can be traced with written evidence. Yet, some clever people managed to create a theory of where this language and the word comes from, along with the origins of many other languages, Proto-West Germanic. Asterisks are used to indicate words that were reconstructed based on possibly related words from the language's descendants, also called cognates. But is there anything more? It does say West Germanic after all, a hint of what's next. Due to some resemblances with East Germanic and Norse languages, it's safe to say that they share an ancestor known as Proto-Germanic, the ancestor to all Germanic languages. Then we have the earliest Germanic language, pre-Proto-Germanic. But this is far from over, because this language is thought to be descended from the ancestor to the Hellenic, Italic, Celtic, Baltic, Slavic, Nuristani, then Indo-Aryan, Iranian, Albanian, Armenian, and the extinct Tokarian, all under the family of Proto-Indo-European. But sadly, this is the last theory nearly everyone agrees with. It's time to jump into the world of controversial genetic superphylums and fringe. First of all, a theory suggests an earlier form of Indo-European called Indo-Hittite, ancestral to Anatolian. There's Uralic, and from here I started to reconstruct myself some ancient words. Reconstructions, or etymologies I have proposed, are marked in blue. There's the infamous Altaic, ancestral to many Asian languages, Chukotko Kamchatkan, Nifke, and Tersinian under Eurasiatic. But thanks to Holger Pedersen, in the early 20th century, there could be an origin for this language as well. In 1903, he named it after a word in Latin that meant fellow countrymen. The name is Nostratic. If you're curious, the Latin word was Nostrates. Borean. This is a proposed macro family, including the Amerind, according to Fleming, and Dene Deic families. The Amerind family is a gigantic group of Native American languages, but has been greatly minimalized for practical reasons. But you get the picture. And under Dene Deic, we can see Chinese and languages situated in Oceania. This time, I suggested the barely possible existence of a language family consuming one side of all the world's languages, such as those of Papua New Guinea and Australia. And finally, the ancestor to all languages, Proto-World. Well, there isn't really an established name for it, so we could go with Proto-Verbic, Homic, Sapien, Homico-Sapien, or just Proto. Well, we made it all the way back to this prehistoric precursor to all known culture. But how did this all happen? Geographically? Well, I also made a visual geographical representation for the spread of this ancient language. Well, here you go. And obviously this animation is extremely roughly estimated. Please don't get mad at me. And also, how did Quina turn into one? This part will include lots of linguistic terms, so it might not be easy to understand for the average viewer. So Quina stays the same into North World, but the transition to Borin is that the K and W merged into a labiovelar ejective. The N devoices and hardens into something like an ent and the A at the end is more like a short-voiced aspirate. Then, to Nostratic, the labial disappears and the N revoices. To Eurasiatic, the I rounds up into an O, T is gone, and the voiced aspirate strengthens into a full-on A. 
to Indo-European, the velar ejective turns into the first unknown laryngeal. An ice spawns, and the final A turns into an OS, probably influenced by other Indo-European terms. With the help of Rask and Werner, the O unrounds to an A, the I becomes shorter, and the S voices to a Z. West Germanic, no more A's, Old English, no more I, Middle English stays the same, but spelling of an turns into un, and finally, modern English one.